Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. If you've not already guessed by the title, today I'm going to be doing a video all about my most worn fragrances in 2022. And I've said this in a couple of my other videos now, but wow, where has the year gone? It has gone so fast. So I'm excited to bring you this video discussing the fragrances that I have reached for the most this year. So if you like the sound of that, then please do keep on watching. But before we get started on the video, I really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and I will continue making videos like this in the future. Plus, I'd love it if you could join me over on Instagram. I have popped my handle on the screen. I love chatting to everyone in the direct messages. Plus, I'm always asking for advice on what YouTube content you would like to see next. So now that's out of the way, let's get started on my most worn fragrances of 2022. First and foremost, happy holidays. I hope you are having a fantastic time, whatever you are doing. And I also hope that so many of you get some downtime during this busy period. I know many of you are likely working really hard during this period. So yeah, I just hope you get a little bit of rest where you can. So I wanted to do a video discussing the fragrances that I have been reaching for the most for the whole year of 2022. And I have about 10 fragrances here, and these are the ones that I know I have been wearing the most. And it's quite difficult because I have so many fragrances within my collection. I typically don't reach for the same ones over and over again. But when I look at the ones I've picked, these are the ones I've definitely been pulling for the most. And I will try to give you a little bit of story time around it, whether I've been reaching for a particular one within a certain month or whatever it might be. So let's get started on the first fragrance. The first fragrance is from a brand called Flora Ecu, and this one is called One Umbrella for Two. And I think the packaging is so gorgeous. I want to show you the back too, because it has a little bit of a poem on there or a little bit of a note. And what I love about One Umbrella for Two is you take the lid off and you can actually put a 10ml travel atomizer in here, which comes with the perfume, which is such a fantastic idea. I think it's so innovative and I've definitely been using this one for when I'm out and about and when I travel. So this is so new to my collection. I think I only purchased it in the end of October or early November. So for it to have reached my most worn fragrances of 2022, that says a lot. So I have worn this multiple days in a row. This is an easy reach for me. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It has to be one of my favorite fragrances within my collection. I have traveled a little bit over the last couple of months, and this is the fragrance that I've been taking with me in the travel atomizer. And I'm just obsessed with it, to be quite honest. The fact that I would wear it multiple days in a row says a lot because normally I'm changing my fragrance all the time. And when I think about what I want to wear, there's an easy reach, a no brainer, and one that I know lasts all day. It will be one umbrella for two. I'm kind of glad it's in a white bottle because I don't want to know how much of this I've already used because this is a pricey perfume and it comes in a 50 ml bottle. So yeah, I can't quite see how much juice is left. I know in my 10 mil travel atomizer, I'm at least halfway through it. You don't need a lot of this one. For me, it lasts all day on the skin. Plus this one absolutely projects. I've had so many compliments on this. So in essence, this is a black currant scent, but it also has notes of tea and rice and a little bit of florals in there too. But that black currant is really tart and juicy and lasts throughout the life of the fragrance. I can smell it right at the end of the day after 12 hours. So that says a lot for a fruity note. You absolutely do get the tea vibe in here too. And I do pick out a slight rice note. I just absolutely love it. I can't say much more about it other than it's a sweet perfume. It's an easy reach. I could wear this for any occasions. And yeah, this one will be in my collection for many years to come. Next up, we have a trusty favorite. And I've mentioned this in quite a few videos now, and it is Killian's Angel Share. And I absolutely love the bottle. I think it's so cool and so classy. And you can see the dent here. And it might not look like a huge dent to you. But like I said, I have so many fragrances. And I'm not a massive oversprayer, to be quite honest. So it would take a lot for me to go through a bottle of perfume. And Angel Share is definitely one of those fragrances that I'm absolutely hooked on. 
Plus, it gets so many compliments. I think this is my number one compliment getting fragrance in my collection, which says a lot. Listen. This is so, so good. It is sweet, very, very sweet. Boozy too, but I've mentioned it in other videos. What I'm getting from this is a boozy warm apple pie. I don't know why, it's just the vibe I get. I don't even think there's an apple note in there, but it could be that boozy element. And they've got another one in the collection called apple brandy, and it almost smells like apple brandy to me. It's spicy, it's sweet, it's decadent, it is gorgeous and it's totally unisex. I've smelled men wearing this, I've smelled women wearing this and yeah you can't go wrong, you're gonna get compliments but you have to like a spicy kind of boozy scent to enjoy. It definitely has like cinnamon in there too and yeah Angel's Share I've definitely reached for a lot this year during all different seasons so it doesn't really matter to me and yeah I think it's incredible to be quite honest. Next up another fragrance you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it is by Commodity and this one is Milk. And I absolutely love Milk. I like all of the Milk fragrances from Commodity. So if you don't know anything about Commodity and this is the first time I'm hearing me talk about the brand, in their core collection, they have six different fragrances, but each of those six fragrances come in three different scent spaces. So this is the middle version, which is called the Expressive Range. You also have a personal version, which is slightly more of a skin scent, and then you have the expressive version, which is very bold and very powerful. I love all three of them, but the expressive is the one I originally went for, and I have no regrets. It's absolutely beautiful. So Milk is my cozy fragrance. This is the one I reach for when I'm either sat at home having movie nights, or when I'm going out and I just want to feel like cozy and sweet and decadent. So. Yes, it's called milk, but it doesn't smell like straight up milk. I'm not a milk drinker. What it does smell like is marshmallows and woods. And it's not too smoky at all. This one's a little bit more subtle. The bold version is definitely way more smoky, but this reminds me of roasting marshmallows over a fire. And the wood in here is mahogany wood. I can't remember if I said that already. And it just gives a nice richness to the base. It does have a milk note, but how it pulls to me is just a lactonic, woody, marshmallowy scent. Totally sexy in my opinion, but ultimately it's a very cozy fragrance and it had to make this list. Next up is one of my favorite fragrances within my collection. I'm probably gonna say this about most of these, to be honest, because obviously if I've been reaching for them a lot, I must of course love them. And it is by Zerzhov, and it's from the Shooting Stars collection. And this one is called Starlight. And I am obsessed with Starlight, truly. I'm a big cardamom lover. If you watch my videos, you probably already know that. And this is kind of like a sweet cardamom bomb, but it smells like baklava to me, which is super delicious. But it's not too heavy or dense. It's got beautiful citruses up top. Can't get the lid off. Obsessed is an understatement. Yeah, it's citrusy, it's got lots of cardamom in there. It's sweet, but not overpoweringly sweet. I wouldn't say it's a uber sickly or realistic gourmand in a way. It definitely smells like perfume. And then you have an amber note in there too. This to me has a transparency to it, which I think I've mentioned before. So the notes might sound like it's gonna be very dense, very overpowering and very sickly, but it has this lightness to it. I say lightness, but it definitely projects too. So don't let my lightness comment put you off. I just mean it has this airy transparency to it, which I don't know if it makes sense to you, but it does to me. And when I think about all of the cardamom fragrances in my collection, this could be my favorite one. I think it is. It's definitely in my top five fragrances at the moment. And if you've not smelled Starlight and you like fragrances similar to me, then I would say definitely try and get a sample of this one because I think it's truly incredible. And it's actually my favorite fragrance from Zerzhov. Yep, I said it, my favorite fragrance from Zerzhov. Next up, another fragrance I've worn so much in 2022 is by Soradora and this one is Mandorle. And I've definitely mentioned this one quite a lot on my channel too. And I must have only had this maybe four months, I think. 
too good. I have done a standalone video on this. I've done multiple reviews, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how it smells, but I will give you the vibe. Now, this is one of the only cherry fragrances that I actually appreciate. It's not necessarily a cherry dominant fragrance, but the cherry is noticeable. It smells a little bit like Dr. Pepper to me. So there's a nice dose of tonka bean in here too almost a fizzy quality. And I've mentioned that about Soradora Brasiliande too. But Mandole is definitely a little bit stronger and more gourmand in my opinion. You have a beautiful kind of suede note in here as well. This is the kind of fragrance I want to wear in fall and winter. I would wear it to the pub. I'd wear it out on a walk. I would wear it to a party. I've mentioned it smells a little bit similar to something like Parfums de Mali Herod, if you know that fragrance. It's just something that you can compare it to if you want to understand how this one smells a little bit. But if you like notes of kind of tonka bean, if you like cherry, if you like suede, then I think you would really enjoy Mandole. It has this boozy quality to it for sure. Almost smells like a dark and stormy with a hint of cherry. And then you're eating some kind of like sweet dessert next to it. And yeah, I know a lot of you have tried Mandole now and have mentioned that you love it too. They have discovery kits, you can try all of their fragrances, but Mandole is definitely one that I've been personally reaching for a lot this year. And I absolutely think it's an incredible composition. If you're a regular watcher of my channel, then you are not going to be surprised by my next fragrance. And it is La Perla Possibilities. I'm taking the cap off, I'm always taking that cap off because this round thing reflects everything. So La Perla Possibilities, I have gone through a big decant of this and I've been trying not to wear it too much because I love it that much and I've only got the 13 ml size bottle and I don't need a lot on my skin at all. A few sprays and I'm done because this is really potent on me for some reason. But in essence, this is a beautiful floral fragrance, very feminine, and then it has a big dose of pink pepper and that pink pepper is totally prominent on my skin. I would say this is a feminine and girly fragrance, but also I think this one is super sexy. It has a big dose of pepper, like I mentioned, but also has a note of freesia, which is a note I really enjoy in fragrances. It has a lightness to it, almost like a dewy quality. And then it has lots of other florals in there too, like Petalia. But I just think this is such an incredible everyday fragrance, could totally be someone's signature scent. If I was to have a signature scent, which I just don't, this would highly likely be it. It's definitely in the top three contenders for that spot. And yeah, I just really love possibilities. And I know so many of you do too. Again, you can get a discovery kit. The only one thing I would mention is their discovery kits are not spray bottles, they're dabbers. So it's not the easiest to test. But if you can manage to go and sample this somewhere, I would highly recommend it because between possibilities and let the dance begin, La Perla has some of my favorite fragrances in my collection. But yeah, I'm a sucker for possibilities. I can smell it from the cap. For some reason, I'm just really drawn to this scent. And yeah, it's definitely one of my most worn this year. Next up, we have another fragrance from Zerjov. And this time it's from the Casamorati line. And this is Bouquet Adile. And I absolutely love this fragrance. This one almost feels very me in a bottle. And I don't know quite how to explain that statement. Possibilities is one of those fragrances too. But when I wear this fragrance, I just feel my best self and it just feels like it's part of me. And the name would suggest that it's a very floral fragrance and this one is not at all. When you look at the note breakdown, it actually sounds a lot more deep and dark than it is. The main notes I get from this fragrance is the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the tonka bean, lots of vanilla, and I pick out some red berries. And there are no red berries listed within this composition, but that is what I get from it. love it so much. Makes me want to cry. I love it that much. Um, the red berry note, it's a complete fancy note because it's not in there at all, by the way. So when I say red berries, this is just how my nose perceives it. And I'm curious if anyone else's does too. So yeah, it smells like deep red and black berries to my nose with the cinnamon and the nutmeg, lots of vanilla and tonka bean and a little bit of woods. It does actually have a tobacco blossom note in there, which some people pick out, but I personally don't. 
But yeah, if you can tell by my reaction, I'm just obsessed with it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And my friend Inez on Instagram told me to layer this one with the shimmering Fenty body butter, which I did because the Fenty shimmering body butter has a cinnamon vibe to it. Well, it smells like a cinnamon cookie. That layered with this, game over. You are gonna smell incredible. So yeah, Bouquet Adile is definitely one of my favorites in my collection. I love it. And most worn this year for sure. Another fragrance that I've reached for a lot this year is Galan's Angelique Noir. And this fragrance is so chic and so classy and can be worn for all occasions. It is a very green vanilla. So it's not your typical vanilla by any means. And the greenness comes from that Angelica note. And this is just so very pretty. I think this would make a beautiful bridal scent has a pear note in here too, which gives it this kind of light and juiciness. And yeah, I've spoken about this so much on my channel. So if you want a more detailed review, I would go and check out my other videos. But yeah, this would definitely be a contender for a bridal scent for me personally. And if you like vanilla, but you prefer a lighter, more green vanilla, then I would check out Angelique Noir. And as you can see, I have worn this a lot this year. And the next fragrance is from Stefan Humbert Lucas and it is Venom Incarnate. And you probably won't be shocked by this one either because I talk about it a lot and I have mentioned this is one of my favorite scents in my collection. This is the one I will reach for when I want something really sexy and very powerful because from this list it is one of the strongest fragrances. Now, what I mostly get from this is strawberry, caramel, and leather. Now it does have a lot of other notes going on within it. Another one, it just like almost makes me drop to my knees. I love it that much. You have lots of wood, you also have raspberry and you have tonka bean. But yeah, the strawberry is very prominent to me, but it's not juvenile in any way. They've made it really like high-end, chic and niche. And that is because they've combined it with the leather note, with the woods. The leather is very prominent. And that caramel is a bit more dark and dense. And yeah, I love Venom Incarnate. Again, you'll find quite a few videos on my channel of me talking about this one. Stefan Humbert Lucas Serpent Range has got to be one of my favorite collections this year. I like so many from the collection, but Venom Incarnate is one of those fragrances that again, feels very me. And it's the one I would reach for if I just want to feel my best self and I'm going on a date or I want to feel sexy. And the next two fragrances, I'm probably going to get some eye rolls for. However, I'm being honest and I'm just telling you what fragrances I've reached for the most this year. And it is both of the Mason Francis Kirk Dijon's Baccarat Rouge 540s. And I have the OG and I have the x straight version here. So I'm going to do a double close up. Sorry for the fingerprints on the bottles. Yeah, I have the 35 ml size bottles of these because I personally find them super potent and I don't need many sprays myself. When I think about which one I prefer, it has to be the x straight for me personally because it has that additional bitter almond note. I just find it a little bit more wearable for my personal taste. And this one will last absolutely days, if not months on clothing. So if you spray this on a scarf or a coat, it's not coming off until you wash it. That's just my experience anyway. I do actually get that with the OG too. I'd say the OG is a little bit lighter. It has an airiness to it. You get more of that spun sugar vibe from it. But yeah, I had to mention them both. I'm not going to talk through all of the notes because I'm sure many of you already know about Baccarat Rouge. If you don't, I apologize for not going over the notes, but I didn't want this to be redundant because I know people get sick of hearing about Baccarat Rouge. But for me, the, the fantastic fragrances, like straight up, I think many of us know that. I know everyone's sick of hearing about Baccarat Rouge, but for me, it is definitely one of those masterpiece fragrances out there and I will continue to wear it. I'm not one of those people that won't wear it just because other people are. I sometimes will layer them, but I just, yeah, absolutely love both of these. They're incredible and they are in my most worn fragrances for 2022. So I hope you enjoyed my roundup of my most worn fragrances for 2022. Are there any in my list that stood out for you as being your most worn too? But what I mostly want to know is what fragrances have you reached for the most this year? Please do let me know in the comments down below because you know I'm going to go out of my way to research these fragrances and I often buy your recommendations. So I would love to know what you have been wearing this 2022. But again, happy holidays. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you all soon in a video to come. 
Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much and goodbye.